thank you. And we are here today for our webinar on PGD experiences. We are here with uh, my wife, Mariana, Hello. who kindly agreed to, to be on tonight. And we are here with Courtney and Alex, who are in Ohio. Uh, thank you very much, you guys. Absolutely. Um, would you guys like to introduce yourselves first and kind of just talk briefly about uh, where you are and kind of like your PGD experience as well? Yeah. Um, so my name is Courtney. I am 27. And like Maddie said, we are from Ohio. Um, we're from a small town, like a small rural town in Northwest Ohio. Um, so do you want to introduce yourself first? Then we can talk so, about our PGD I'm stuff. Alex. <laughs> this is my husband, Alex, more specifically. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so we started thinking about like family planning options, honestly, probably um, before we got married because my dad was diagnosed February of 2017. So it was a few months before we got married. Um, so once we had that confirmation on his diagnosis, we knew that we wanted to look at our options. Um, uh, we also knew then too that um, I wanted to be tested so that, you know, if we had to move forward with those family planning options, then we could do so they do so um, accordingly. Um, so I got tested in April of 2018 and tested positive. So after that, we definitely, you know, we decided that we did not want to even risk um, possibly passing this on to our children. That's just our personal choice. Um, so it was not long after that, we started like researching IVF clinics in our area. Um, and when I say our area, our IVF clinic is like an hour and 15 minutes away. So it's not really that close um, to us. But um, <clears throat> let's see, um, the end of, by the end of the year, like by the end of 2018, we had met with the two clinics that are in our area um, and then kind of narrowed it down to one and then started the process with them. Um, so yeah, so we made our PGD probe uh, first and that was in January. We just like, we just went ahead and started doing that just to get it out of the way um, because we knew we had a really busy summer um, and we wanted to kind of plan our transfer for um, fall time. So we went ahead and made the probe, which um, the probe is the, uh, the test that the genetic lab uses um, to test the embryos um, that they biopsy and send off to that lab. Um, <clears throat> so after we got that complete, we got our probe completed in like, it only took like what, three? Two or three weeks. Yeah, I was going to say two or three weeks. It was super fast. They told us it would take anywhere from six to eight weeks, which is kind of another reason why we just wanted to start it early and get it done. Um, so we got that done, got that back in like February or something. I think it ended up being, and then we started, um, I should say I started uh, stimulation medications, uh, in July, um, of this year. <clears throat> and, um, we had our egg retrieval and that was in July. Was it in, it wasn't in. It was still in July, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, so that was still July, sorry. Um, so we had our egg retrieval and they collected 18 eggs. Um, 16 of them were uh, mature and then 12 of them fertilized. And then we got the call and all 12 made it to that day five blastocyst stage. And then from there, they biopsy them and send them off to the lab to be tested with that probe that they made. Um, so that's the PGD part um, of IVF. So, um, so we had that wait, which was, I almost feel like that wait was worse than waiting to see like how many made it to day five. I don't know why. <laughs> Um, so waiting to get those test results back. So we found out we had three healthy, normal, um, HD3 embryos. Um, so we transferred one in September and it was successful. And so then here we are. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yeah. And you're currently pregnant. Yes. How, how far along are you for the audience? Yes. So I am going to be 12 weeks tomorrow. 
So technically 11 weeks, six days, I suppose. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Thank you. <laughs> and Mariana, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Mariana, and we also were talking about our pregnancy options even before we got married. Mm -hmm. And I knew I would not be comfortable with prenatal testing because I wouldn't be comfortable with possibly going for abortion if the baby in the womb was tested positive. Mm -hmm. So IVF was really our main option as it's quite difficult to adopt for couples with Huntington's in the family. Um, IVF in a way was not the preferred option ethically, but in the same time, I would not allow for having a child at risk. So it was really the only option for us to consider. Um, and we've gone through the cycle in the first cycle we've gone through was June 2016. <laughs> and that was really like a trial cycle because they wouldn't know how to approach me with the medication and what dose to sort of mm -hmm. uh, put me on. And unfortunately, I was very much hyperstimulated. We had to stop the medication and restart it after two days again, but they call it coasting. So because of this time without the medication, they only collected like six eggs, which we ended up with one healthy but poor quality embryo. Mm. And after transfer, the pregnancy test was negative. Mm. And that was really, really, really tough to go through. Um, but then we had another appointment with them. We found another approach with putting me on metformin tablets because of the polycystic ovaries. Mm. And that worked much, much better. Uh, in October 2016, we've gone to 15 eggs collected and 12 embryos. Eight embryos have gone to day three because the testing was a bit different than in your case. They were growing the embryos till day three and then they were collecting the sample like one cell only okay. uh, to send it for testing and out of these eight embryos only one embryo was unaffected and as a miracle it happened to be our <laughs> only child mm -hmm. who is now one and a half yeah awesome yeah thank you mariana it was quite a joke and he's asleep right now <laughs> 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 Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do this webinar. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so thank you, everybody. Um, so uh, you kind of went through it a little bit there, but just going back to thinking about PGD uh, as an option, you're talking about having children and the options there. What made you decide for PGD? Because um, and also I recognize when you were talking about your introduction that you, your father only recently was diagnosed with Huntington. So it's quite new for you all as well. Um, so what was your thinking and kind of going for PGD rather than anything else? Yeah, so um, real quick with my dad being diagnosed. So he or so his mom had Huntington's, but we didn't really have a name for it until she was pretty much in the later stages. And also we were kind of one of those families that didn't really talk about it. Um, so, a lot of those. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, so um, it wasn't something that got brought up a lot. I mean, our, my immediate family is so like my siblings. I have a younger sister and a younger brother. And then like my mom, we would talk about it and we're pretty open about it. But like my dad's siblings, not so much. Um, so it was new for us in the sense that it was actually now like a reality for me and my siblings that that could possibly be something we have as well. Um, so that was pretty hard to deal with his diagnosis. Definitely. Um, that was a hard, a hard time in my life. Um, but, but yes, what was the first question? <clears throat> why PGD? Oh, why PGD? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so. X is four. <laughs> uh, so I think like Mariana said, um, we weren't really comfortable with the option of getting pregnant naturally and then having is it uh, CV sampling? And then um, at least I believe in the States and it sounds like where you guys are from too, you know, if, if it, it does test positive, then you have to terminate the pregnancy. Um, yes, you have to agree to that. Yeah. So that's something I was uncomfortable with as well. Um, 
again, per- very personal choice, but um, that was something I was uncomfortable with. And like I said, we definitely just knew we did not want to pass it on. And the ultimate way to just know for sure that that's not going to happen is with the PGD IVF. And for you guys, I mean, in the US, of course, you need help financially to do these to do this because uh, here in in, uh, the UK, we have that support from the government for a few attempts, at least. Yeah. uh, Positive. Um, Yeah, which is awesome. Tell us about what happened there and what you had to do to, to actually take that process and have it there available to you. Yeah, so um, we have no insurance coverage um, <clears throat> for IVF on with my insurance because um, my employer does insure me and then his employer insures him separately. So we, bo- we checked out both plans, but um, neither of them had any coverage. Um, so we had already had like a good size savings built up um, together. So we used that savings, um, to put towards the IVF, which they told us that it would be around like what, Mm $23,000. Um, so they told us that's how much it would be. And that was not including medication and also like a couple other like pre-appointments that you have, um, for our clinic, particularly, it was like a bundled where they did the stimming or the stimulation appointments, the ultrasounds for that the egg retrieval and then the transfer and the appointments for that. But like after that, then you still have to pay for those appointments and also you have to pay for your medication. So I think in total, we probably um, spent about 30 to to $32,000 on it, um, which was quite a big hit, obviously. Um, Yeah. And that's something to keep in mind that they don't, I mean, every clinic could be different, but like, you know, you, you need to look into that to see what is covered and what isn't. So you truly know how much is, you know, you might have to pay for out of pocket. Mm. And, and that's, um, I mean, I find it, you know, fair play, you guys, you, you, you had savings and, and you, you used it on PGD and, and it costs a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. But you got, <laughs> you were successful on your yeah. first attempt, which yeah. is just, fantastic news and I think you know probably yeah. you deserved yeah. it really <laughs> <laughs> yeah we were, we were very surprised by that and I will say I think I psyched myself out a little bit too thinking that it wouldn't be successful um and I think that's why initially I was pretty disappointed with the number that we had um like sending in 12 biopsies yeah. for the PGD testing and then having only three come back that hit me really hard. Like I was so excited that all 12 of them were going to be biopsied and sent in. So then I started thinking like, what am I going to do with all these extra embryos? Like we can't have six kids running around the house or, you know, like we can't, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough lifetime to have six children. So you know, I don't know. So I was, so yeah, you know, I had those thoughts and then it turned out that we only had three and I was a little disappointed because I thought I would have more of a cushion um, you know, just in case something were to go wrong and, you know, yeah. um, it just didn't work or, or it worked, but then you miscarry, you know, there's so many different things that can happen. It's, it's definitely very scary, but yeah. You only need one. Did you yeah, guys, that's, that's absolutely, right. Absolutely. You only need one. Uh, did you guys, were you going to go again if you failed or obviously if you, if you've been able to frozen some of those embryos, then it would have cost less to try again, right? Right, so, yes. To it would go have again. Significantly less to try again. Yeah. I think it would have only been like maybe like five or six thousand dollars to do just the transfer. Yeah. That medication was not as expensive as like all the stimming medication. Um, and we, we did plan, we were hoping to be able to do it again. I don't think we hadn't thought that far into it, but I think we would have had to borrow some money from a family to be able to do that. Um, we didn't have, we wouldn't have had that no. now to do it again on our own. Yeah, it would have taken a bit more time. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. You only have so much money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you guys did really well. I mean, you guys are 27. You, Alex, mm-hmm. you 27 as well? Or? 26. Yeah, I mean, you guys to save that money up you know most most, for it. most couples don't have that kind of savings available or aren't thinking right. about that kind of right. savings well, yeah no doubt so i understand our situation is a little bit different since we were we did have some of that in savings um 
And I think that a lot of that just has to do with, we were talking about this well before marriage. Yeah. So. That, yeah, that part too. We kind of knew it might happen. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to have savings. For that things is. like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Mariana, do you want to talk about why you chose PGD? Well, PGD seems to be the best option for us because it would be our biological child. And I always thought that it's quite amazing to have a child together and you can see like, you know, your partner whom you love, you love so much in this little child. And that, that is quite amazing. Practically, when you see little Matty and little Joey, it's quite, <laughs> well, it's magic, really is. So that was the main thing for us to have a child together and also to have a child who is not at risk and to not possibly go through abortion. That was the main reasons for us. Also, it was really helpful, even though we would have committed ourselves probably regardless that, but free trials of free PGD attempts, are funded, yeah. attempts of PGD are funded by the national health system in the UK. Yeah. And that was really, really supportive. Yeah. yeah. That was that was a big factor in, in pushing it our way. Um, and I say with prenatal with the, with the CVS one, um, yeah, we were just a bit uncomfortable about the uh, abortion uh, if it was positive. Um, but it's something that we would have considered if kind of PGD didn't work out in that sense. But because we had it available and it was uh, we had those th three attempts for free on the healthcare service, so we thought, well, we should try that for sure, you know. And if it works out, yeah. great. If it doesn't, then we'll just look at other options. Yeah, what was quite lucky for us as well, the clinic was in Birmingham rather than uh, commuting to London for each scan every other day. That would be really <coughs> tough as well. Although Birmingham, it still was like an hour away, wasn't it, with the traffic? At it's least a, hour. It, yeah, it's about 45 minutes yeah. to an hour, depending mm -hmm. on traffic. Yeah. Yeah, we, we uh, originally we thought we were going to have to go to London, which would have been about an hour and a half trying to get in there on the train each time. Would, right. you know, I mean, you guys obviously do that to get to your clinic. And it is it is difficult, isn't it, when you're going... It's doable, especially, though, but it's nice not it's to doable, have to but do it. when you're going through the process and you're in those kind of two or three weeks when, when you're going to the hospital mm -hmm. with time. Yeah. That travel it, really becomes a lot doesn't it it does the travel becomes a lot and also like the time off that you have to take from work too yeah. um yeah, you yeah. Are so much holiday and the rest needs to be unpaid if needed and yeah that's what i think as well it sure is <laughs> <laughs> um so tell us about the process for you guys in terms of those two or three weeks when you were going to the clinic and they were kind of checking your eggs and all these kind of things um how did you find it all um, yeah, so our clinic, I feel like our doctor was good, obviously, but I feel like with uh, cases like ours, they're kind of like, well, I, I don't really know what to do with you um, because, you know, like I didn't personally, I didn't have any fertility issues. And when Alex had his testing done, he was okay too. So it's kind of like, you know, we don't need any extra help. We just literally need to kind of make this process happen and then, you know, do it outside of the body and put it back in you. Um, so okay. our appointments were always very quick and they were just like, I don't know. It was because there wasn't much else to address other than, okay, yep, things are growing well. They look great. Um, you know, um, I will say, I think, again, I psyched my, myself out on some things because I watched a lot of videos about uh, people <laughs> going through IVF. So I was anticipating to Is see that good or bad? <laughs> I think <laughs> I think like kind of both ways because I was I felt very prepared but then um initially when we saw how many follicles I had I think I had nine on one side and like seven on the other they were both in like single digits so I was a little like let down by that um because I had watched these IVF YouTube videos and girls had like 50 egg 50 follicles <laughs> on each ovary you know or something wild so, which was very unrealistic and I should have realized that, but, um, I remember that first appointment kind of hit me hard and I was pretty upset afterward and Alex uh, had to help me. <laughs> yeah, I was a little, I was kind of upset, but, but I mean, otherwise, um, the appointments are very easy just with doing those ultrasounds and checking on things. Um, I did, did not. Or 
the ultrasounds and that kind of treatment. Did you say invasive? Mm. Um, yeah, so they do like a transvaginal ultrasound. Um, but again, like I said, mine were always pretty quick um, and easy to find my follicles as well. Um, so that all, that went pretty well for me. And and I know, Mariana, you said you didn't respond to the stims very well. The first time. Yeah, so, but then I was very much overstimulated. Yeah. yeah. And that's, did, that's you, the did you already know that you had PCOS before? You see, I was suspecting that and I was suggesting wow. that to them as well. But okay. they sort of ignored me. And um, then they realized. But so see, it was far too late to put me on metformin. Gotcha. Which then again, there's not enough evidence behind metformin and it gives you horrendous side effects. Right. But we would have, I, I strongly feel we would have never succeeded with the pregnancy eventually. Right. If not metformin. So. Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's that good. was the difference between the first that's attempt a huge and, the, and the second between. attempt, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Controlling that with you see, the problem is as well, though, where, that with PCOS, you can have lots of eggs, but they wouldn't be right. very good quality. Right. And because of that, the embryo may stop growing after day three mm -hmm. or may not even get there. Mm -hmm. uh, we still had uh, eight embryos, but then I think at least one of them was affected with Huntington's, but some of them, I don't know how many now, had some aberrations, chromosomal problems, mm -hmm. so right. they would have transferred that anyway. Okay. Yeah, because of the risk of miscarriage or unhealthy baby. Right. Anyway. Yeah. 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 What about uh, sticking the injections into yourself every mm. night? Is that fun or? Because <laughs> the woman, me, me oh, and Alex have the easy experience in this yes. these stories, don't mm. we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I just had my last progesterone and oil shot. What was that? Sunday night? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm finally done. But um, <laughs> with the stimming meds, I, I thought it was going to be worse than it really was. At least for me, my needles were so tiny. Those ones that just go in your little belly fat roll. Um, you know, it was just such a tiny needle. It wasn't so bad. And actually, Alex is a type one diabetic. So he has to inject himself with insulin every day. So it's kind of similar to the needle that he has. So before I got my stimming meds, I practiced with his, just his needle, not his insulin, obviously, but um, I practiced with his needle just because I wasn't sure. Um, and also, I, it, I think it took me a lot more medication to, for my body to grow the follicles um, than he was anticipating, my doctor. Um, so we did have to buy more medicine. So that was another thing, additional cost. Um, but I also didn't notice, like, did you have a lot of side effects? I didn't really have a lot of side effects I when it came to stimming. It. I know people who had awful side effects from the mm -hmm. medication. Right. But I wasn't like hormonal or very much yeah. in the mood or anything like that. It was quite fine. The only thing That's is, like the second cycle, I was really struggling with loss of appetite, with like having mm. strange flavor to everything because of taking metformin, like for okay. the diabetes type 2 people. Right. Uh, who are all usually put on metformin to start with anyway. Mm -hmm. But it was giving me awful, awful, awful side effects. I was feeling mm -hmm. sickly all the time. I was feeling not very well for a good few months. Yeah. And then there was pregnancy symptoms as well, which is okay. That was a bless anyway. So I was going <laughs> yeah. through it, but that's fine. Right. But, but it was this time. Mm -hmm. But injections, for example, Matt was doing the evening ones for me because he was uh, trying to get involved into the whole process. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. when I asked he would like to have some water injection for himself just to see how it feels, he, he was not very keen on the idea, so he eventually no. didn't try it. I said, why, why would I stab myself for? <laughs> Unnecessarily so. Right? And also, the morning injections were only injected by myself because he knew that he was good to sleep. So. Yeah, I was still asleep, to be yeah. fair. Yeah. <laughs> and I did not have many side effects. Um, it was okay. Yeah, I'm also okay with needles, and it wasn't feeling bad to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. I'll say those progesterone and oil shots; those were kind of the worst for me, just because that needle's so long that it does make you a little nervous. But mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and Alex did those for me because I had a hard time; like I had to put them in like my very lower back, mm -hmm. and that was that was a little bit difficult for me to like mm -hmm. reach around there and try to get it. Oh, that's not very nice. I mean, I don't know what is nicer because I have to take the suppositories. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Because you have to do it frequently, didn't you? Twice a day, yeah. Yeah, but okay, that's what I thought. Only, only for some time, I think, only till pregnancy test. I don't want to lie now, but I think it was only till pregnancy test. Yeah, I think okay. it was. Yeah, yeah. So, Alex, did you enjoy stabbing your wife in the back? Or? <laughs> oh, well, so my nails are a lot smaller, so it was a little intimidating at first uh, with the length because I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to hurt her, you know. But yeah. um, after the first couple, it just kind of became second nature, so it wasn't yeah. really that bad. He got good at it. We had our little routine, and we would heat up. Pro tip is you heat up the progesterone oil before you put it in your body so it gets to your body temperature, and then you don't really feel it going in. That was definitely helpful. <laughs> Someone's been doing their research. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you do. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Um, what do you think about you? You were talking about it a bit earlier about once you've had your eggs taken out and you're there waiting for those embryos to grow and, and then you have your number and then on the next call it becomes less and then the next call it becomes less and then you yeah. know, uh, it's quite emotional uh, isn't it what, what was that yeah. like for you guys so yeah it's very it was very emotional and we got our clinic actually emailed us like what was it the next day to say how many were fertilized um so we got that number which was 12 and then for us I mean, we were very lucky with this. All 12 of ours made it to that day five stage. So when they, when they called on day five and they told me that we had like all 12 made it, they were like, this does not happen like often at all. And they said, usually you lose like 50 or 60% of them. Um, but the embryologist said just all 12 made it. And I, I remember I bawled as soon as, like, as soon as they called off the phone, I was crying because, you know, I was so happy with that number. Our big mm -hmm. drop was, of course, after the PGD testing, um, yeah. which, you know, you got to be realistic about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it, I think that is a surprising, well, when you're doing it the first time, it's certainly a surprise when you kind of, yeah. you think, okay, we've got a good number here, but then you go and get them tested for hunting turns and other, and other conditions and, and factors as well. And then you right. realize, yeah. yeah not that many. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like I said, I thought we had a good security blanket going, but really, it, it just really dropped down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, was, it was kind of just kind of defeating, I guess, to go, you know, like, I don't know, I'm an engineer, so I think in numbers. So yeah, we lost 75%. But mm -hmm. I mean, all it takes is one. So I mean, we mm -hmm. tried to remain positive like about it. And, <laughs> So now, you know, yeah. it did, all it took was one. So now we still have two. So we have multiple opportunities in the future if we uh, want to. If we could, yeah. Just good news. Absolutely. Yeah, amazing news, yeah. Yeah, yeah did, definitely. Just, did we have eight for that second attempt? And then it went down to one? Five. Yeah. 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 So, yeah we had eight that so went to the day. Then one came back. Do you I want to tell the story? Yeah, we had... Uh, from this 15 eggs collected, we had 12 embryos and only eight made it to day three. And from those eight on day four and a half, it really was. They called us saying that we only have one healthy embryo and we have to rush for a transfer on that day when they called us. Oh, because yeah. they're afraid that if embryo stops growing, we'll not have anything. And mm. we're going for the fresh transfer that cycle. Um, so I was like all in tears, telling my manager that I'm sorry, I have to leave because we have to go. She here was and crying. Now. She yeah, was, I was so upset. Yeah, I was calling to get ready. Yeah. Like, well, I was really upset. It was kind really of similar stressful. to what you guys were talking yeah. about there as well. Because our only chance, really, because right. the whole process was so tough. That I was right. really keen on going through that again. Mm -hmm. and You're right. I think if you don't have any more embryos left, you have to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's tough. That's like emotionally. Yeah. Really tough because physically I would be dealing with that. That's easy. That's okay. Right. But emotionally, when you think about all these eggs growing and then mm -hmm. with the PCOS complications, and then you think about oh, how many will fertilize, what's yeah. the quality of them, and mm -hmm. how many will survive, and how many will be unaffected most of everything. So that was the toughest. Yeah. Uh, in the same time, I was hopeful, but I wasn't really very hopeful. Um, and I was trying to just say, hey, come on. Yeah one here let's see how it goes fingers right. crossed yeah and it worked yeah. well it was very good 
Well, yeah, we got there, exactly. they, said that, they said that that embryo was actually the healthiest one out, very good out quality, of all the other very eight. Good that, that was the one that they would have wanted to have used. Anyway, um, so, so good. That gave us something to go off there, a little bit yeah, of positive. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah. Absolutely. And then you were getting kind of feeling a bit weird, odd, weren't you? And then we well, were I, testing. Then again, because we were going through the um, fresh transfer that gives you a higher risk of complications um, of mm -hmm. hyperstimulation again with PCOS, especially. So I was very bloated. Like all of a sudden, I looked like I don't know seven months pregnant or so. <laughs> I'm not the skinniest person, but at the same time, I'm not very like plump or obese. So all of a sudden, I had to start wearing the clothes even before the pregnancy test just to cover up the belly because I looked like bloated and very very big. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking, I was after lots of using Doctor Google, I was thinking it could be like the water hyperstimulation in my belly. Uh, and eventually, when it was really, really tough for me, went to the doctor for a we scan. Went, yeah. And for a blood. We went back to well. the clinic <laughs> just to check. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they said that from the scan they cannot say anything, but they sent my blood sample for testing, and they called us back the same day saying that most likely we were pregnant, and that was again a magic moment Friday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. That was good news. <laughs> How was it for you guys hearing hearing that you were pregnant? Yeah, so um, I asked the clinic to call my phone and leave a message because we got the call during the day um, and we both were at work. So we wanted to wait until we were at home to be able to listen to it together. Oh. Yeah, so, so they happened to call me at like 2.45 and I'm still at work and I see this voicemail, which was like so hard not to click on and listen to. <laughs> Um, but we got home at like 4.30 then that, that afternoon. And as soon as Alex got in the door, we just went and listened to it. And yeah, it was pregnant or it was, it was positive pregnant. So, you know, we were, yeah, just very excited and relieved too. Like it just feels so, I don't know. Yeah, you it's just, definitely a weight off your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Money well spent in your case. <laughs> right. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Happy about that. More money to spend on a baby. <laughs> yeah. <Just> getting <laughs> Right. We're already racking up. He's already racking up a bill. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna have to pay you back. You have to start saving for university. <laughs> right. Right. No doubt. <laughs> but I mean, that's it's just great news. You know, you're getting it on your first attempt because I mean, the odds of that are, are quite low. I think. Yeah. I, I know. You like. It's probably three attempts. We you get in the UK with the three attempts. If you're kind of a young couple like we were when we started, um, not so much now. But, <laughs> um, but generally, with those three attempts, you should get <laughs> okay. pregnant. But it no, it doesn't always happen. Of course, you know. Right. You know, who have done three attempts? I mean, so problems with PGDs as well. That it depends on your health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as well. And it's not only Huntington's involved. It's like PCOS in that case, or the sperm quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, yeah, it's kind of something you don't think about, you know, yeah. I mean, at least yeah. I didn't think about it. So that's something I will say is like, you know, consider not only your own health, but also your partner's health. Um, yeah. That just helps with egg quality and sperm quality and all that. Stuff. Yeah. And that's, um, that's part of the criteria here in the UK. If you want oh. to get that funding from the government, you have to be like, for instance, not smoking or, you oh. know, okay weight and these kind of things so you have to yeah. be doing the right things for them to even try it because okay. obviously that increases the odds of not not smoothies. right mm -hmm. right definitely that's but good then it, it's fantastic news that you guys got got that first time really yeah. good time. i know like i said i was very surprised because i had anticipated i was anticipating it not being successful and kind of mentally preparing for that and what that would look like then later but yeah we were very lucky that first time that's, but that's what I find difficult in the process as well, because you have to you have to be positive about the whole process, but in the same time, you don't mm -hmm. want to be let down. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. As we were after the first one, so. Yeah, and that's such a hard, hard balance. To balance that yeah, one. it's kind of an emotional roller coaster, isn't it? Totally. Yeah. Hundred yeah. yeah. percent. In all in all aspects. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have one final question, folks. You've been yeah. very. Good. Um, so, what would your uh, what would your advice be 
for other couples going through this, what would your advice be or for other young couples thinking about starting the PGD? What would you have to say? Um, like I just kind of mentioned, I would say like try to be as prepared as you can. So that means like being healthy yourself and your partner as well. So kind of looking into that and seeing um, what you can do to just make your egg quality better. Cause yes, we do have Huntington's disease we have to worry about, but like you said, there's other things that could be wrong with egg quality or, um, you know, chromosomal abnormalities. So the best chance would just to make sure, be sure that you're both healthy. Um, I would also say like, do not be afraid to reach out to somebody and ask them their experience or if they, you know, could talk you through it or anything like that, just so you get an idea for it. Cause I don't think, I don't think I necessarily really did that, but like I said, I watched a lot of videos. Um, so I kind of had an idea, but the IVF world is so different for people like us who, you know, we have HD in the family. So it's not necessarily like we've already had a lot of losses or something like that. So it's hard to approach that IVF community, um, you know, because that's kind of an outsider a little bit. At least that's how I felt. And so I was afraid to talk to anybody about it. So in the HD community. You can get a different you reason out in that sense. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, in the HD community, do not be afraid to reach out to those other people or couples who have been through it. Do you have anything? Oh, maybe don't watch so many YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Calling out, calling you out. Set yourself up, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like well, I guess, yeah. Don't, don't rely on YouTube facts. Find a good clinic, too. That would be helpful. Yeah, that's important. Yes. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> I would say just keep believing in the process because it works. It's evidence based medicine at the end of the day, and you only need one. Yep, that's right. And it's one the embryo, and that's all what you need. That's mm -hmm. true. Really As is right now, sleeping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God. <laughs> um, I have. I just thought of another question for you two. Uh, oh yeah. If you've got time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Have you? You know, you're only early in the pregnancy there, but have you? Have you uh, spoken to your friends and family, and what's the reaction been from those guys uh, to oh. to the news? Yeah, so we told like our immediate family um, right after after we got the results that phone call. Uh, we were like way too excited, and they all and like my mom, his mom, his dad, um, my siblings, they all knew, and my grandma, they all knew we were going through that IVF process. Um, so yeah, so we went and told them like right away because <laughs> uh, we were just too excited. And then we also told some friends. Um, later that weekend, the ones that knew um, we were going through IVF. Um, so we told them that weekend and obviously all very excited. Um, yeah. And we had also the two, the, there's two, two particular friends I'm thinking about. Well, four, if you count their significant others. Um, we had also told them about the fact that I tested positive for HD2. So, you know, they knew why we were going through it and, you know, were excited for us that this is going to be a healthy HD free baby. Um, so yeah, so that was pretty cool to be able to tell them that. Um, but we haven't kind of publicly announced it yet since we're still kind of early on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's been hard not telling everyone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's such exciting news. You know, right. It's so tempting, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and the thing is with, 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 the uh, with the IVF and PGD, you, you kind of, you get that pregnancy news much earlier than you normally would right yeah. so you, you kind of have to wait a lot of time to be able to get yeah to okay let's yeah, help you exactly <laughs> yeah yeah okay <laughs> well um i wish you guys all the best uh and real pleasure you yeah you want me to wish you all the best no i'm not sure <laughs> what's the best already yeah i mean you a really nice couple and uh congratulations on, on the pregnancy and hopefully you have a beautiful baby yeah. uh when will it be due uh, june, the 4th. june 4th nice. june 4th nice. well i was oh, hoping to go to congress but i'm not going to be able to fly oh <laughs> come on i know i know <laughs> we should have planned that better <laughs> <laughs> so i'm telling my siblings they have to go to conference <laughs> or congress <laughs> for me <laughs> 
um, now I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, me too. <laughs> People say they're not coming to Congress. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, it, it's, it's a very good reason not to come to Congress. <laughs> yeah. It's like the only reason. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's the only acceptable reason. <laughs> I'm pregnant. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go enjoy your baby. Fine. <laughs> so enjoy the pregnancy and hopefully if it goes well with the pregnancy and not too many uh, problems with that um, because yeah. it's obviously a worry time. We were worried all the time uh, or right. I was. Anyway. Well, I said the highest pregnancy because of IVF, but fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Thank um, you. Thank you both very much. It was nice to meet you both. Thank you very much. Folks. Very nice to meet you too. Have a good evening, and we'll be keeping an eye out for you guys. Uh, we're seeing what you have—a boy or a girl. <laughs> oh yes. All right. Good. Great. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Bye. Take Bye. care. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Okay, there we go.